Hi, everyone. I'm your host, Patty Giarusso, and this is Let's Talk Pets on Society Bites Radio. Today, we welcome back to the show Carmen Brothers and Bob Swenson. They're joining us for part two of our talk that we had a couple weeks ago, and we're going to finish talking a little bit more on trapping and lost pet recovery Um methods i guess so i just want to tell you about them first uh lost animal rescue resource group was founded by four dedicated animal rescuers and these individuals included bob and carmen along with jill barsky and denise harris and together they have over 20 years of combined experience in lost pet recovery and their services are available nationwide with a focus on the east coast bob has expertise in designing and constructing a variety of traps, including the Missy traps that are for hard to catch animals. And we're going to talk about that because I hear about Missy traps a lot, but I'm not really that familiar. I don't think anybody around me has ever used them. So I'm really interested in in learning more about that. And Carmen Brothers and Bob Swenson are both co-founders of the nonprofit called Lost Animal Resource Group. And they assist with community outreach, strategic trapping, and pet tracking. And they help with all types of pets, ranging from dogs and cats to turtles and goats so i'm guessing you both found turtles and goats so welcome to the show <laughs> thank you yeah thank you so very much you're welcome so uh last we talked we had to cut short bob when he was starting to get into the missy traps of the different types of traps so i don't know where if you want to start a little bit regarding trapping and you know how you both feel uh, it, it becomes necessary to set the trap versus the other methods. So for trapping, so, so you want to know more about why we use, why and when we use the Missy trap? Well, I do want to hear about the Missy trap because I've read about it, but I don't really get what it, you know, what its purpose is versus, you know, like a lot of times here people use what they're calling a coyote trap. It's just a bigger trap. Um, what okay. is the Missy trap and, and why do you decide to use that versus the other one? So the Missy trap was designed by Greg James of the Retrievers in Minnesota for a dog called Missy that would not go in a standard box trap. Uh, okay. They tried, I'm sure, every different method to try to get the dog in the trap. Uh, but when they came to the conclusion that she would not, uh, Greg designed uh, like a large kennel and uh, it had a door, uh, like a large opening for the door, and a, uh, a panel uh, was cut out. There was a hole cut out of the door, um, and uh, a, l- a little bit larger uh, panel was cut and was hanging from the top so that when the dog went in and grabbed a, a piece of food, that was the bait, um, it would release a lever and the door would slam shut and close. And thus the, you know, the dog would be captured. Um, the, the trap is probably, uh, some around, some are square. You can, you can do different shapes, but it's about six feet to eight feet wide, maybe 10, 12 feet long, uh, with a special door. And, um, you know, the bait literally hung on a, a hockey puck, the dog would reach up, grab that, pull the rope, the rope would release the lever, the door would slam shut. Um, they've made several improvements, and we've kind of modified that a little bit, where uh, the door is bigger, or the opening is bigger, the, the door closes like a regular door in your house from the side, uh, and it's held open by a magnet attached to a beam, uh, once the dog goes back to the back of the trap, you have to train the dog to the back of the trap. Once the dog goes in, crosses the beam for the food, the magnet releases and the door slams shut. And it's um, you have two, three latches that hold this door tight. Uh, some people use that exclusively. Uh, I know friends who, who they pretty much just use the Missy trap. Uh, I like the box trap because it's easier and quicker. Um, the Missy requires about an hour to set up. Okay. Uh, the, you would use the Missy trap either as a, your standard trap, or when you get a dog that just won't go into the box trap. Uh, sometimes if the dog has been caught before in a box trap, they're, they're smart enough to know to avoid it. 
Yeah. So yeah. depending on the behavior, and, and we set up cameras, video, live video cameras that are cellular connections uh, in front of the traps to, to check their behavior. Are they going up to the trap? Are they sticking their, their head in the trap? Are they eating any of the food? Uh, and, and judging from their behavior at the trap, you may have to move to the messy trap. Um, it requires a larger space. It does require uh, much more setup. Um, but it's, it's an amazing trap. It, it works whenever I've had a dog out, the, the Missy trap, uh, works every time. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Because I know that, as you said, uh, the dogs become, um, smart to the other traps. And if they've had the experience where the do- door may have, um, what, like hit them, uh, yeah. and the, and they escaped that then they will not, they, they're just too smart to even try it. I don't think anybody around my area has a Missy trap because we had a dog that somebody asked specifically for that. And nobody that in my network had that. So, um, it's interesting, you know, but as you said, it, it requires a lot more, um, I guess, experience and time to Correct. do. Yeah. So and what do you think? They, be they can be really hard to um, transport because they're so large. Okay. You know, I have a four and a lot of times, I mean, well, not a lot. No, I can't get it in my four one. Okay. So is it like, you know, <laughs> well, is it a pen or it, it's got a top on it too, right? Uh, some people yeah. use tops. I've, I've used them a couple of times depending on the size of the dog, you know, th- uh, does the dog seem like it could jump or climb out? Um, I, I've designed actual uh, panels, kind of like, uh, well, two types, coyote rollers uh, that are on the top of the trap so that they, if they try to climb out, they can't because when they try to grab onto the top, it just it rolls. Um, I've also designed um, uh, security panels or flip panels, I call them, that is basically, if you know what a, a security fence looks like, if you're trying to climb up, it kind of arches out. Mm-hmm. Um, and those, you know, the security ones have barbed wire. Mine is just a panel that, that bends in, on the inside. So even if a dog did try to climb out, they, they would be kind of flipped out on their, on their back because they have nothing to, like, flip over this panel. But um, some people use nets. Some people use chicken wire uh, just to stop the dog from getting out and and the one of the key things about the missy trap as opposed to the box trap uh for the most part the box trap they're they're not going to get out of and if they're in there for 15 20 minutes you know even a half hour sometimes they're still okay uh because most box traps you, you just you can't get out of uh mm. the missy trap you have to be there within ideally 30 seconds to a minute oh, because really? i've Yes, I've actually had one dog escape all, you know, all the Missy traps that I've done. This one, it was a 30, maybe 30, 35 pound hound dog that just planted her feet and just pulled and pulled and pulled on the door. And she was so scared. The adrenaline was pumping so much that she was able to literally bend heavy gauge metal and pull nails out of uh, this, the the door and escape. Yes. Never, never seen anything like that before. It was unbelievable. Yeah. So So we jumped right in. Oh, I'm sorry. So we jumped right into this interview talking about a trap, but let's, let's back up now because I was really interested in what the, what this Missy trap is all about, but let's back up and talk about successful trapping methods. Like when do you decide, uh, to trap versus using the other, uh, methods of pet recovery? When do you go to that particular decision for somebody listening so you well, would trap I would when... that... okay go ahead Bob go, you go ahead <laughs> I say I would say that trapping is probably one of the most effective ways I mean if you can't physically if you have a dog that's in flight mode it's going to be extremely hard and you have to be really prepared on what to do if you do you know, if you are able to actually physically see your dog and your dog sees you, you really need to be good with your calming signals and make sure that, you know, you're on the ground and you're not in a threatening manner and that, and that kind of thing to make the calming signals work. I can't tell you how many times I've seen owners 
that are five feet from their dog and do start dropping to the ground. But by the time they're on the ground, that dog's already gone. Yeah. Um, and so trapping really probably, I would say, 90% of the time, the most effective way to bring a skittish dog home. Okay. Yeah, because it's hard, it's hard for people to know, um, you know, what to do without professional guidance and that's why you're here talking with us today so that um people would know what uh you as professionals would suggest to do and especially with a fearful dog like that right right yes and and again a lot of people don't understand that their dog's not going to come to them when they see them they go out there thinking of course you know i've had this dog for 10 years and you know fluffy sleeps with me every night in bed and fluffy loves me and you know, there's no way that I could get eyes on Fluffy and Fluffy not come running and bouncing into my arms. Um, and yes, Fluffy does love you. And normally Fluffy would 100% come, you know, bouncing up to you and it would be fine. But once Fluffy's been out in the elements and out on his own for a little while, it's just not the same dog. And it's very, very hard for people to understand that. Yeah. So, Bob, what do you think, um, you know, do you suggest that, the people uh, maybe maybe it's not really a fearful dog as much as it may be in an area it's not familiar with is it still considered the same a fearful dog or would it be considered you know just the dog has basically lost its way but he's got the personality that he would come up to everyone but at this time is that beside the point Usually, once the dog goes into survival mode, and that can be instantly, a few minutes, a few hours, or a day, uh, or you know, some some period of time when the dog something clicks in the brain and it's like, okay, I'm lost, I'm scared, survival mode, I have to protect myself and and save my life. Um, it 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 is Carmen is right. It's it's the easiest method to catch them, uh, calming signals and trying to get the dog home. If, if you know where they are, can work, but sometimes it can take, you know, hours, days, weeks of just sitting there and, and getting the dog's, co- uh, you know, trust and then trying to get them to come closer to you. Mm-hmm. Um, for, for trapping, you want to know that the dog is in a certain area, whether it's a, uh, a, a hazardous area, whether it is a safe area. And, and a lot of times what happens is uh, a dog gets out on an adventure or they're scared and they run and run. And then all of a sudden it's like, okay, I'm past the danger or I've, you know, I've lost, I've gotten lost after chasing that deer. Now what do I do? And then their brain kicks into survival mode. They generally try to find a water source because they need that to survive. Um, and generally near, you know, trees or bushes or places that they can hide. Mm -hmm. Um, once there's sightings, uh, once people know, okay, here, here's my dog. My dog has moved a mile away or, you know, a half a mile away and it's um, hiding behind this house and they've had several sightings. We know the dog is there. That's when we do the trapping because for tra- you can't just put a trap out and hope you catch something. Uh, we've had <laughs> some instances where people said, oh, my dog is somewhere in this neighborhood. Can we just put a trap out? And it's not like that because you will catch – raccoon, possum, uh, cats. Um, I've even caught a, probably a half, a half a pound rat. Can't you, you can't just throw a truck and goes to it. You have to do your research, uh, look up on Google maps and find, you know, the most likely hiding place, uh, near a, a pond, a, a stream, a creek, uh, and some some covering. Then you urge people to get the the posters out so that more and more people see them, and you get them in one area. Uh, it would be better, you know, to have at least two sightings.